it's been a year. Hello and welcome back to Bolts. This is Bio Enchanted, and today we'll be going through one of the more interesting early levels in the game. Also the last level of this chapter as the game uh, puts them together. So there's a chapter based on each location, this is the last chapter of the opening. So there's an interesting aspect with this level that's it's basically the exact opposite of the previous level in multiple ways. Uh, the first way, of course, is that every arena that you fight in here has quite a lot of empty space around the edges that you can knock people into, which means you have a, quite a bit of um, strategy to go there. So if you're careful enough, you can get people to the edge of an arena and just throw them off with the uh, Y. I mean, if it was a bit closer to the edge, that would have knocked you off completely. That's always quite satisfying as well. Plus the trick with these girls is we have to uh, stand, stun them with a uh, attack first, like with the really fast guys. It will see later on in this level as well. This is the level that combines the two. And there's an example of her being knocked off. And him being knocked off too. Quite satisfying to do that really, it's quite fun. There's another way in which this is a complete opposite of the last level, but we'll see that when we get there. For now, let's use our powers on environmental stuff. Which is something that will happen a few times in the game, and it's quite fun when you get to do that. And it's not just using lasers to cut through walls like that was. There's a lot, there's a few more aspects to this as well. But it's honestly quite cute when we see it in action. But for now, let's go over here for secret. Quite a well hidden health upgrade if you don't go all the way to the left, because you might not think to do that. Well, with this level, I actually had to replay it to get a collectible that I missed the first time through, but I spliced in me getting it. It just means that at the end of the level, the health bar will kind of it will increase and it will kind of go down again, because the rest of the level will be the take while I didn't get that thing. But here's coming up to the main use of powers in this level. And it's a really fun idea as well. That red triangle that you saw on the low edge there, that's in two pieces, that is the time limit. When the triangle completes, the pillar re raises. And so before that happens, let's quickly make ourselves invulnerable so that we can be protected when it smashes the pillar. Which is, I quite like doing that. There's a few uses of invulnerability like that in the game. Uh, where you get to use it to avoid getting hurt in ways that will otherwise hurt you quite badly. And that's quite a fun use of powers, and I really enjoy that. Especially given the nature of later levels and what we'll see involving that. But for now, that's a nice little introduction to the idea. I also quite like that it makes you feel powerful because just because of the amount of damage you do to the rooms doing that as well, like we've completely destroyed this entire platform. I mean that was a just a floor, now we have to do platforming to get to the next section, but for now let's take care of the rest of these goons, shall we? Careful of uh, Batani or whatever name is, there we go. Yeah, using the vulnerability power to avoid her thing doesn't really work as well as getting just straight up out the way or hitting her with a more aggressive power. Because if she misses you or you hit that, that happens, that makes her actually a little bit vulnerable. It's also just quite a fun visual thing, and that's also one of the main uses of the laser vision is along with the super bark, it the super bark and the laser vision can knock people back quite far. Which means if they're at the edge of a cliff, you could just knock them straight off. You would not have to worry about comboing them or anything like that. Just die! Figured I'd use that because I never use that outside of when I need to. And it's nice to be able to just ruin things.
So I quite like this level has a few different ways of interacting with the environment using your powers. It uh, helps things feel a little bit more uh, nuanced, a little bit less just like a series of arenas. Like it feels like an actual location and a thing that Bolt's doing because he has to use everything in all, at all times. It's not just using your fighting skills in a fight, you have to use all of your tools all the time to solve the mission. And that's quite interesting for the whole secret agent thing. It fits the uh, what the game's going for. It's always fun juggling people like that. That's always quite satisfying. You can kind of tell as well when you're done because that sort of thing happens and it just kind of opens up a new route. But first, there's another rather well hidden secret behind the ruins over here. And there's another one even further to the right over here. That's one thing I really like with this game, it has some really interesting, well-hidden secrets if you know where you can jump to. You just need to experiment and see if you can make the jump there, or if it's going to be an invisible wall. But that was quite a satisfying one to find, I really enjoyed that. And yeah, these doors are really just monster closets, there's nothing to them, which is a shame. But we have to go this way past these, flame skewing lion head, it's a very Indiana Jones-ish sort of a level, this one. I guess we're meant to assume the Calico put all these traps here. Or just repurposed them when he uh, moved in. I do quite like in general though that like every time you use your power to get beyond something, and at least in this section, you actually break part of the ruins. It really helps the again, it helps the powers feel powerful. Because it's not just hurting the enemies, you're destroying the entire ruin by just doing a bark. Just by barking at some roots, which would, like collapse half the ledge. And that's quite a satisfying thing. That's something that this game does rather well, well is that aspect of satisfaction uh, when it comes to environmental destruction. So now we have to go that way. So let's head over there, shall we? Careful though, because these are all falling. Nothing beyond here. Let's just move on, shall we? And now we have to actually raise the Jaguar head, we can't just laser it. We have a small puzzle to solve. It's a platforming puzzle, but it still kind of counts as a puzzle. Even though it's a very simple one, because we're very early in the game. The platforming will get quite tricky later on, and there will be some rather interesting movement puzzles in later levels, but for now it's fairly basic stuff. But even then, it's going to get tricky by the end of the level when it comes to where some of the secrets are found, and I appreciate that. These guys, of course, are the guys that are really quick and can't be hit unless you stun them. Apparently they're basically the opposite of the Baton Girls, in that the Baton Girls don't move much, but they also can't be hit by much, because they block everything. Those guys take the opposite tactic, and are don't block anything, but they're unable to actually be hit. I thought that was kind of interesting, that it's not just um, that they're immune to powers or whatever, it's just that they avoid powers in different ways, or they avoid your usual attacks in different ways. It helps keep them fresh, it's not just like, oh, she's just a wee skin of him. It gives them a distinctive uh, method of dealing with you. Which help really helps with the whole teamwork idea as well. Because in fights where you have both of them together, you have to really kind of, uh, you have to really focus on what you're doing there. There's a few enemies like that where you really have to focus on what they're doing first and deal with them. Uh, but we'll come across them later in the game when we get to those moments. So let's uh, gnaw this out of the way, so we can so we can pull the uh, platforms out of the wall. Yeah, no should microphone there. Sorry about that. Now, these it again. It was really quite a mess. It's always quite fun in these kind of games to be able to make that kind of mess. 
It helps superpowers feel super when you make a bit of a mess with them. Yeah, this level actually allows us to upgrade both our power and our health, the vault at least. Penny we still haven't nearly enough collectibles for, but we haven't had a level with her for a while. Well, two levels, that's not really a while, but it kind of evens out. Yeah, this one's kind of tricky, because if you fall... You kind of have to go and light the uh, pull the thing again because uh, the pillar's about to raise about now. There we are. So I have to pull the thing again. Yeah, from these last two, you actually have to get there in one go, or you'll have to make the pillar rise again because now it's a bit of a longer route to get where you need to get. Here we go. So let's wait till it finishes the completing the triangle, and then we'll blow through the next level of this ruin and see what happens on the third layer. And yeah, this is the other way in which it directly mirrors the previous level. Not only do you have all the places where you can knock enemies off ledges, but now we have to use our R2 to break through stuff again. But this time we're breaking vertical, breaking upwards instead of downwards. So we're basically, we fell down to the bottom of it as part of Calico's trap, but now we're making our way back to the top again. Yeah, I wasted energy on that one. I did not use that particularly well. And now I'm having a bit of trouble in general. I quite like the slowdown stuff though, because it's sort of... Uh, it actually helps to see what everyone's doing. So, for example, if I hadn't noticed that she was preparing an attack in the corner, the slowdown would have helped me notice, oh, that's happening, I better deal with that before she actually sets it out. Like that. Because otherwise that happens, and that's annoying because it gives you a little bit of a, um, a delay when you have to get back up again. It's always nice as well to domino people into each other, that's always... There we go, get her off the ledge. And him. And whoops. Yeah, I'm not doing well not getting hit here, but at least he's gone. And now we've got another one. Yeah, we, we have quite a lot of these girls in this level, actually. It's kind of ridiculous to keep throwing these people at us. I think it's to make sure we know how to fight them properly. that's the last one now. Finally. And you can tell when it's actually finishing the fight because the music stops. But now we have to raise two jaguar heads. Oh, there's one more person here to deal with. Let's just get rid of her. There we go. Dealt with. Quite like that randomly bark will just like bark to himself, that's really adorable. There's a lot of little ways like that in which the game kind of humanizes Bolt and Penny. Well, humanizes Penny, I guess canonizes Bolt would be a better way of putting it. But as you can see here though, the upgrades actually make a massive difference already. And here is where the cut is where I put the uh, other one in for getting the next uh, upgrade. I quite like just how big the upgrades are in a, just in each individual one. There's like a third of the bar, which is a big help. Especially given how much play powers get, and how much health enemies tend to take half, and how easy it can be to accidentally get hit in some stupid way. Maybe that was for beating up enough of the star throwing enemies. I think generally you get one for beating up enough of a particular type of enemy.
raise one Jaguar head. Let's make a jump that stumped me on the first time through this level that I have to redo to get it right. Because I keep making a mistake in this game of going at 8x to go dash instead of 8a to get height. So I just didn't get enough height on this jump the first time. We have to 8a to get the height, and there we go. And now we have an upgrade to our health and our energy. Which means we can take more damage as well as dishing it out. I actually have no idea how long the bars get because I never actually got all of the collectibles. There were always like a few that I was missing at the end of the game, at least when I, the one time I beat the game it was anyway. One of the fun things though with the Y button to throw them thing, uh, when it's in that slow-mo mode you can actually aim it. If you're facing away from the camera with them, uh, and you can see something in the background, you can actually target something in the background and throw them into it, which is quite neat, and if it's breakable it breaks, and I quite like that. Like in this level, for example, you can throw people into stalactites, uh, although that doesn't do anything to stalactites, but you can also throw them into some of the statues and break the statues with them. Which is a satisfying, again, a nice little bit of environmental destruction that helps you feel more powerful. Like, a lot of things in this game tends to help with feeling powerful, and I really enjoy that. Because it's something that a lot of beat-em-ups tend to fail at, is you often, with a lot of these kind of games, you can end up feeling kind of flimsy if you take too much damage too quickly, or if you don't have enough health. And if you're playing as a superhero type character, that can be really frustrating, like, why is Wolverine dying in two hits, what's going on here, you know, that kind of thing. But this game kind of avoids that by making you feel fairly tough. Yeah, you can notice their health went down again, that's because it's the original one of the level. And now we've risen the other Tigers, the other type of Jaguar head, so let's go and uh, cut to me not dying of the stupid thing. <laughs> Let's just get back there, shall we? Try some more platforming. This game makes you get quite good at platforming, especially if you want to get all the stuff. Let's beat up these guys. This time we've got this guy around as well. Some coys and some skies. I believe that this actual, like, getting to the pillar on this last one isn't actually that difficult because uh, you can make quite a big, uh, not sure if it's intended to be a shortcut or if it's the intended route, but you don't have to go that entire way, which is quite nice. And yeah, these guys can be a little annoying if you can't, because it seems kind of arbitrary with the distance on the laser vision. So sometimes it can seem like, hey, how is this laser vision not hitting this guy? I'm clearly throwing it at him. And I've just wasted energy now because it's not hit him, and that's always... That's one of the marks I have against this game, is that sometimes some enemies can just not get hit by things that look like they really should be hitting, like the laser vision against these star guys. But they're really better to just throw away with um, uh, the uh, super bark. It's just they don't have enough energy for the super bark. There we go. Finally got in the laser vision. So frustrating. The laser vision is also just generally faster and cheaper than the super bark. And because it has that very mild homing thing, it's actually a little bit more reliable. Because the super bark can accidentally be barked in the wrong direction, and that sucks. We just need to wipe these jaguar heads now. And make our way to this final pillar, so we can actually finish the level. And the chapter. Let's get to the pillar, shall we? Using a little bit of super speed, because why not? We're a super dog, why not? Oops, yeah, don't get hit by the fire. It roasts you and it hurts quite a lot. Luckily, those levels now are pretty much over. We just need to. But yeah, it might be that you're actually intended to go around the very long way because of how much time you have here. You just don't need to because you can just take that massive shortcut, and that's I appreciate. We just need to wait till the right moment to put on our invulnerability so we can smash through the last floor and finish this level. 
I've also seen a cutscene in which Bot gets canonized in a really cute way that I really enjoy, which is his reaction to the upcoming level. I really love that. So I'll see you then. longer a menace. As long as the professor believes she's alive, he'll do what is asked and finish the weapon. Too bad we can't all have my lives. Good boy. They think we're goners. That should keep us off their radar for a while. Here's something. Strokeball Railway. Northern Russia. Bolt. Do you like trains? How about trains in really cold places? When do we finish off the professor? We wait until the grid is in position, and we're certain that the weapon works. Besides, after all this hard work, he deserves to watch me test it on his hometown. <laughs> Dad can't finish that weapon. If he does, they'll... Bolt, look out! Bolt! So I'll see you next time for the train level which is quite fun, and the new enemy type, the Bommy. But we'll see that when we see that in the next level. Hope you've enjoyed this level, and I'll see you then. Goodbye. Just pausing a moment to increase the tension. Tension building!